Melody Festival in 2016 kicked off tonight with the first semifinal in Gothenburg, and Ace Wilder and Robert Bingson have advanced. You guys, Ace Wilder has qualified with her song, Don't Worry. I can't say that any of us are surprised. Porig, what's your first reaction? I kind of have mixed emotions. In one sense, I kind of feel that I'm holding Ace to too high a standard, and I kind of think that she should be better than she is. But then I wonder if I'm not holding her to high enough standard and that she should be better, and she's not. Because I don't think don't worry is as good as busy doing nothing but then at the same time when I look at the field it's the only song that's stuck in my head afterwards so like I'm completely torn but I do like the song it's stuck in my head it's very memorable and I am very happy that it's gone true um basically Ace, well, I was never a fan of Ace I, I didn't like busy doing nothing at all like really at not at all and I wasn't really like looking forward because uh, I'm not a fan of her voice. But this time she really impressed me, especially with the staging. It was fantastic. I mean, the cubes and the dance, it was, it was probably one of the best, uh, probably even this year in Melody Festival. And so good job on that. It is a catchy song. I really have to say it like it stays in your head, as, as Porek said. It's like it's re memorable, and I think that's really important. And obviously, she went to the final. We actually all knew that. Um, but yeah, it's not her best. But for me, I like it actually more than Busy Doing Nothing, if I'm honest. Of all of her singles, Busy Doing Nothing, Riot, Stupid, this is my least favorite. It's got a mambo sound, which I don't really like. That said, I still remember it, like the, the hook, the riff, she's so good at those and like it's still going through my head. And as you say, the staging was far and away the best of the evening. I feel like if SVT wants you to do well, aka you have a big name and can draw in ratings, they will give you the budget to have an amazing, amazing stage show. And she had that. I mean, this deserved as a performance to go through. Um, I'm not convinced it will challenge to win in the final. We obviously don't know all the songs, but I don't feel like it's at that level, uh, but I think, no, in fact, I know that I'm happy this is there because it adds that wow factor. It's a real showstopper. Um, so well done. The other qualifier in this heat is Robert Bingson. He, of course, was on Swedish Idol, another big name. This was a roll, roll good. Porig. Yeah, I really liked it. Um, you didn't like it during the week when we heard the snippet, but it came together very nicely. It had that kind of harmonica, we all know he was pretending to play the harmonica because it specifically states in the rules that you can't play live, but it still worked and it didn't do any harm that he was probably very easy on the eye. Um, but yeah, he was probably a surprise um, direct finalist. I'd say most people were kind of betting that Samir and Victor, especially once they whipped their shirts off, oh, yeah. that's, that they would be direct to the final. But I'm happy that he's there. He was, personally, I would have put him in Andre Johnson, but I'm not complaining. The song is catchy. It's got that kind of, it's got a certain vibe to it. It's different. It's not a, something you'd hear every day in the charts. You probably heard it every day back in 2013. Nowadays, you don't hear that much, but it is a worthy final. But basically, he was my favorite of tonight. I just have to say it. Like he had, he has probably he had the best song of the evening. And as Krista Bjorkman said, there are like two songs that could win Eurovision. And I think he might think it's that one of them. Uh, I don't see it, but um, maybe you never know. No, it's a really good effort of, of 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 him. And I think the song, and of course, he's good looking. That gave him a lot of points. I think uh, also. The staging didn't impress me that much. I mean, there is a lot to do. The song has really big potential, but it didn't get me that much, actually. But uh, he is he's a good singer, and I think he will do pretty well in the, in the final. It's interesting you say you didn't like the staging. To me, this was fantastic. It was so simple. I don't want to say like Loreen, whereas actually, actually I do. At the beginning, he's just there on his own. It's all black and there's like light on him. It reminded me of Loreen, how they cropped it quite close. It was almost cinematic. Um, and then when it goes wide, it's just, you know, 
gold lights. I thought it was really effective. The harmonica gives us a bit of soul. It's very bluesy. Um, it doesn't sound like any other songs that I've heard in Melody Festival and recently. I, it really stands out. And that simplicity, that purity makes it so good. And he's just so good looking. The eyes at the beginning, I was swimming, y'all. I was like, yes, faith in it. It's just something really like rich and sultry about him. And he was working that camera like no other. Yeah. They could just nearly for the three minutes just have his eyes because his eyes are just so deep. But um, I don't think the song has the same depth. Yeah, it is a bit repetitive. I like the atmosphere it creates though and the vibe. And there'll be so many bangers at Melody Festival and that this is a great change of pace, no doubt. And he needs to rename the song. Nobody oh. cares about his pronoun words. It's not clever. It's just stupid. Put it as consolation prize. Get rid of the constellation. You're just distracting from a good song. <laughs> no, I think the title is probably, I mean, if you can have like a bad title, what, you would choose that because that is pretty, the, the most shittiest title of a song in Melody Festival. And I mean, the song itself is great, but why should you like choose if you can have so many good Titles and he chooses the bad one. I mean, it's not really a good, it's not really smart. But I think it's going to be a recurring team because Molly Sandon is a favorite and she has you oh. as her title. So, like, we're going to have a final of painful titles and I think we probably have to accept it. I mean, puns are great, but in a serious <laughs> song contest, they are not. It's almost like the songwriters thought they were being clever because they could use English at this level, but it's just, it doesn't work. It may be impressive, but it ain't cute. It's grating. The first act relegated to second chance, that Samir and Victor with Bada Nakna, bathing naked, swimming naked. You guys, I was shocked by how the camera kind of went away so many times to show like a woman rolling in a tub of water. It, it was almost like they were distracting from the performance, you know, because there wasn't enough pace on stage um, and perhaps to give them time to strip off their shirts. I found it a bit peculiar. And early on, there's a long segment of silence where it's just kind of drum and bass going on and there, there's no action, there's no noise or no vocals rather. Um, I was slightly underwhelmed by this. I think it's a lot of fun. I think. Perhaps they were going for something more sophisticated than Groupie, but I think Groupie had more energy and more pace. Yeah, Groupie was better. Their summer hit, Saxo Fucking Phone, was better. Um, but I don't know what they were going for either because I don't think it's a very sophisticated song. It's about skinny dipping, essentially. Um, but then even just the basics, it was kind of like SVT were like, okay, we want you to strip, we want you to so show your... Um, topless bodies and we want to see all your abs but then we're going to be quite prudish and we're not going to show you taking off your shirt and I think a lot of people would have liked to see them kind of doing the whole erotic shirt removal because it was kind of like they're there with their shirts then they cut away to the woman spinning around in the puddle and then next thing Samir and Victor had no shirt on um, the song itself then it had this big interlude with no vocals they were just there bopping and Samir and Victor, they're a bit like Jedward. They're not the strongest vocalists, they're not the strongest dancers. They need to have both going on at the same time for it to work. So, so yeah, it's not as good as Groupie, but saying that, based on the reputation they built up from Groupie, I am kind of surprised that they're not direct to the final. Um, you know, I was really underwhelmed and I thought, oh, my, this year they won't qualify, but then I realized the fangirls will vote for them anyway, so we are... It and the so fan boys. I'm not one of them. Um, basically, I, I didn't like them last year. It was the worst for me in the, in the final and didn't deserve a place. And this year, I'm kind of like, okay, the same happened again. Um, they are not singers for me. They are just like attention seekers in a way. They just want publicity. And also the ripping off the shirt, okay. It's not a big surprise that they seek for votes like that. I mean, okay, but at least they're not in the final yet. I hope they won't go through because I hope second chance is like really tough because then they won't go through anyways. Um, yeah, I, I don't see any potential in this, sorry. The other act relegated to second chance is Albin and Matthias with the song Rick Rich. 
I was really underwhelmed by this. I mean, I've not been impressed all week. I think that Matias is great. I say he should ditch Albin for a second chance, sing solo, no rap, because he plays to the camera. He's got great stage presence. But then whenever Albin comes in, I'm just like, cringe, please make it stop, and it doesn't. I don't think SVT believed in this either, because there is no staging. It's just a few spotlights, some purple, a little bit of blue, done. I mean, it, this is filler, is what this is. On Twitter, I noticed there was people tweeting that this is what Samir and Victor could be like if they sang well. And then I was like, this is what Samir and Victor would be like if they were boring. Because Samir and Victor, or not Samir and Victor, Matthias and Alvin, fair enough, Matthias sings well. Alvin does his rap. But the song is completely forgettable. I, I don't care about the song. They're singing about money or capitalism or something. We've heard it all before. Except, well, I don't understand what they're singing in Swedish, but I presume I've heard it all before. There's no real hook to it. They have no chemistry. We said in the preview videos, they look like they're singing a love song to each other, which clearly they're not. Yeah, I'm just underwhelmed, and I don't think it deserves to be in the Andersons. I think it's like like last year we had in, in Mali Festival and like the same. It was with, with the, the rap, something with Ma Malena Ehrenman where she was like singing. Um, basically, it's like the, the same song. song. Yeah. Yes, it's the it's the same song basically, just sang or sang by another two persons. I mean, Matthias is great. He has a good voice, and uh, I think he would do well without the other one. I don't like rap. I, I'm just not a fan. And Sweden kind of tends to send them to second gens, but I don't think this will go through. It was just like, in a way, that didn't work. Um, I mean, whatever happened in, in Sweden and who voted for them, I don't know who told them to vote for them, but basically this is just a, a second chance song that will stay there and not go anywhere. Who voted for them? Fans of EMD. They are just harking back to the days when Matias sang alongside Daddy Saucedo. It's a shame. Because of their, you know, advancing to second chance, that means Mimi Ferner finishes in fifth place with Ain't No Good. This really upset me. I thought she could have gone direct till final. I know she has no reputation, and that probably hurt her, but she's a great singer. She looks amazing. She was working the Texas Cowgirl. Her choreography was on point. She made the hoedown look high class. She set the barn on fire, and I'm just completely shocked that Sweden didn't respond to this. Um, it's a shame. I thought it was a fun disco song that sped by. It felt like one minute, not three. And she did a great job, but so, you know, Je suis Mimi, please come back. You've robbed my line. Je suis Mimi. She, she was, the, she killed it on stage. Granted, I wouldn't have put her in the Mamma Mia outfit, <laughs> but apart from that, the whole down, she was like Dina Na done doing a cover version of Timber by Kesha, which I just absolutely loved. Like, even Twitter, and Twitter is kind of a fairly static platform. Everybody just came alive. It just lit up the whole thing, and everybody's like, Mimi, Mimi's great. Mimi, Mimi, Mimi. And, yeah, she was a song. She brought life. She wasn't dated. She was modern. But she had just enough kind of maybe old-fashioned charm that older voters would have gotten her. And I was hopeful when she was performing, because they have this little heart this year that kind of lights up pink. Um, to show the amount of votes that an act is getting. And she was going quite pink. But then once Matthias and Alvin came on after her, they kind of exploded. And I was like, oh no, poor me. But yeah, I'm heartbroken for her. No, it, it was like, it was funny to see because there was Samir and Victor, and then there was that Pernilla lady that nobody oh, yeah. remembers. And then Mimi, she really like, she, she owned the stage and nobody cared about the other two anymore. Like it was, she was, she didn't have the most recent song, it wasn't really modern, but she owned the stage and she knew how to fill the stage with, with her voice, with her, with her attitude, with her performance. It was, it was fantastic, but it's really a shame that she's not even through Second Chance. I really thought she would go through. That is actually, a, that is actually the problem of tonight for me, that, that deserved a place. And actually, when she performed, I thought she would go straight to the final as William. I mean, that was just like, that would be the surprise. And actually it was a surprise, but not a positive one, sadly. 
One reason I feel bad for her is she went from the high, because they showed her and Penilla Anderson, and one of them was going to be eliminated, and one of them was going to stay, and she, you know, stayed, and she was so happy, mm. she went like this, cue the photo, and then she got eliminated, and like, poor girl was sad, and so were we. In sixth place, finishing dead last among the six performers, was Pernilla Anderson with Mitt Gould. You guys, this was forgettable. I still can't distinguish verse from chorus. It felt like it went on forever. Even she looked bored. I just, I'm not sure why she came to Melody Festival and with this, because she's an amazing songwriter. She's got an amazing voice. Um, I guess she's on the other side of her career. I hate to say that, but something just isn't working. Well, personally, I just want to say that I think I appreciate Pernilla a little bit more because I tuned into the suicide appreciation group that was Ukraine beforehand. And that was the dreariest national final I have ever seen in my entire life. Every single song was just a dirge. And Pernilla, by <laughs> comparison, was just full of cheer and charm. But we're comparing her to the Melfa songs, not the Ukraine songs. And she was forgettable, she was boring. The song, the chorus and the verses, they were interchangeable. There wasn't anything distinct in between them. She was nice, she was sweet. But when you're comparing her to two really muscled, toned guys stripping off their shirts, or a woman doing all these this choreography with six replicas of her dancing around, she was never going to get through. Um, basically, uh, if I wouldn't have the recap, I didn't even know that she performed because most of Twitter even, they fell all asleep and I was one of them. No, it was just like we all knew that she would place last. I mean, that was the most obvious thing. She, she, there was no chorus that you could remember, there was nothing in the staging, there was no melody. It was just like a lady with a guitar singing in Swedish, nobody understands. And any, I, I don't think that she would do well with that kind of song. She has a pleasant voice, but that's not everything, as you can see, because people voted for Samuel Victor and they have no voice. <laughs> um, but basically, if she doesn't change her song for or like the level for Melody Festival, she will always like flop, like tonight. So, but I'm feeling sad for her because I think she's nice, but the song was not nice at all. Yeah. I have a feeling that Anna Book received more votes than Pernilla. <laughs> That's how boring it was. And speaking of Anna Book, she of course was actually the first contestant eliminated from this heat. And on Thursday, when she was disqualified after it emerged that her song had been performed at Moldova's national selection in 2014. So she performed an exhibition performance and she brought her energy. But I gotta say, she looked a little harried, a little upset, like she was still recovering from all this drama. My heart really went out to her. Yeah, I don't feel particularly sorry for the lady, to be honest. Her her staging was atrocious, and we know from the start that, that was the staging that she would have used if she wasn't disqualified. She had this horrible dress, didn't suit her at all. She looked better when she was in rehearsal. She had this love heart that was like feminine back in whenever they used their love heart. And then I don't think Anna Book can be particularly sorry because being realistic, she wasn't going to qualify tonight. She wasn't going to make on the shop then. She's at number one in the iTunes chart in Sweden. She would never have got to number one if she hadn't been disqualified. People are feeling sorry for her. She's probably having one of the biggest hits of her career. She's going to have sympathy votes. She's going to be back next year because people are like, oh, poor Anna Book, we'll give you a good song. And you might even be in the final. So, yeah, in hindsight and looking at it on a big macro level, she's done very well for herself. Obviously, right now, she might be feeling a bit down in the dumps, but I think in the long term, it's probably the best thing that could have happened to her. I think if she would have still be a contestant after this drama, she would have gone straight to the final. I, I, I could see that. Mm. Because of that publicity that she got, that is like the hype around her is like bigger than of all the other contestants and that she the fact that she's like number one on itunes is like i mean it's not a good song just be honest like it is not a good song at all but i don't know it was special it was just like the schlager and i missed it in this semi and she just brought it back as an interval act she slayed um Obviously, she, without that background now, she wouldn't done well. Maybe she would have placed like 
six. But in the end, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it practically more than the than the most of the contestants. So I was kind of surprised, and it's really brave of her to go on the stage after being disqualified. But I think it was all just for publicity, and that was a really smart choice. And you know what? If she needs a song for Melody Festival in 2017, three <laughs> songs were eliminated in Finland tonight. <laughs> she can go fishing and choose one because they are real strong. <laughs> In any case, that's what we think. What do you think? You can let us know here on Weebly Blogs, and you can also check out interviews with both Ace Wilder and Robert Bingson. We have those on our YouTube channel. See you later. Bye. Bye.